Hey everybody, this is Alex Merced from alexmercedcoder.com and in this video I want to do another 60 minutes of just kind of like going over as many cool Express things as possible. So in the first video, if you haven't seen like the first like deep dive 60 minutes of Express, we went over just basically how to set up an Express server, what's going on when you set up the Express server, setting up middleware, setting up routes, um, lots of cool things. So now we're going to go over more. So what I have done is I've pushed the code from the original video to this GitHub repo. It will be in the video description for both. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a branch. Okay, so I'm going to make a branch now. So git checkout dash b, and we'll call it 60, or we'll just call it video2. Okay, dash b, video2, that's going to create a new branch. Okay, so that way any code that I do in this video will be in the branch. So that way if you want to see like the state at the end of the first video, it'll be on the main branch. Then video two will be on this video two branch. And uh, any subsequent videos I'll keep, if, if I continue this series, will be in those branches. Let me just clear out all this space over here. So I think the next thing that'll probably be worth showing is just kind of like, how would I start moving a lot of this stuff into other files? Okay, now the typical setup, what you generally want to do is you want to create a folder. It's called model views controller. So we already have a views folder because we went over templating. But let's touch a models and controllers. Okay. Uh, folder. Okay, so first what we'll do is we will create a we'll create an API first. Okay, because that we can do that a little bit quicker. Okay, and even though I did not create the folder, I created two files. My bad, touch creates files. It's make dir that creates folders. So it's make dir, M K D I R, um, models, controllers. And again, think, always think of models as data, anything data related, your data layer. Controllers are your routes. And views, again, are your templates. Or if you're using an API, then your views would technically be like that front end React, View, Angular app. Okay, it just depends how you construct your app. You can do whatever you want in Express. You can even mix match all of the above. That's what's cool about a minimalist framework like Express. You can do whatever you want. And if you like Express, there's two other frameworks that are very similar in Node, Koa and Fastify. Very similar, very minimalist. You put all the pieces together that you that you like. So pretty much anything you can do in uh, Express, you can do in Koa and Fastify, just slightly differently. Technically, I think Koa and Fastify are both faster. Um, at least, at a, you know, again, at the end of the day, how you do things can also affect speed. So you could, if you make a sloppy Koa app, it'll still be slower than a really well-made Express app. So at the end, there's also like your ability to like determine sort of what's the best choices and things. But those are other options in Node. Okay, and I have tutorials and whatnot. Just go to my resources. But anyways, okay, so last time we were looking at our server.js. Now we want to start moving some of the stuff. And again, at, at the very end of the video, I switched over to ES module syntax. So I'm using like this import X syntax, not the require syntax anymore. Because it's a choice I can make. Okay, I don't have to. It doesn't make a huge difference, but I can. So what we're going to do is we're going to try to move some of this stuff out of um, here to make this file a lot simpler, okay? So generally the dependencies should stay the dependencies, okay? So this is not going to really change at all. Um, although, just to make this a little bit cleaner, what I'm, I am going to do is I'm going to keep all the import statements first because it just looks neater. And then we'll do this and this. See, that just looks a bit nicer. I import everything first, then I do any kind of setup functions. Okay, and middleware. Okay, cool, 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 cool. Now, let me show you a cool trick that can help, again, make this file a little bit easier. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually make another folder called middleware. And essentially what I'm going to do is I'm just going to create a function that will register all our middleware so that way we can do all our middleware configuration away from our main file. So how do we do that? I'm going to create a, we'll just call it mid.js for like middleware and all I'm going to do here is since I'm now using module syntax I'm going to export default a function so function 
And then what you're going to do is you have to pass in the app object. So that's our web server variable. You pass that into this function, and we'll just register our middleware from there. Because that object is going to have the same functions that it would otherwise have. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to... What, what is my middleware? Okay, and then I don't think I have everything that I would normally use installed. I got .env, Morgan. Well, .env is not really middleware. Uh, e Morgan. I'm trying to think what other middleware do I want to install. Let's install cores. npm install cores. Okay. Um, npm. Uh, any other really good middleware? No, I think that's good as is. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I am going to need to bring in Morgan and Express into this library. I don't think I need the .env yet, so we'll, we'll come back to that. Uh, what doesn't it like there? Function. Uh, oh, I wrote this as an arrow function, even though I use the function keyword. My bad. That's how it should be. There we go. Okay. So the idea is that this here is going to be whatever the app object is in your server.js. So knowing that, I can just do this, app.use, because I know like this I'll pass in web server, and web server will be inside this app variable. So I can use its use method. So I can say, hey, I want to use Morgan in here. OK, and say pass in tiny. OK, I also want to import cores, since we installed cores. Import cores from cores. Now, what is cores? So again, Morgan is middleware for logging. So this is like a logging middleware. That's what created all those little messages in the terminal every time a request came in. Logging middleware. Now, app.use cores, what this does, it's going to change the headers on our responses. And it, what it does, it adds cores headers. There's four different cores headers, which is like um, access, allow, control, origin, uh, access, control, allow, headers, access control allow methods, and access control, and then there's another one that's like access timeout, like actually let me just show you, course headers. And again, in any backend framework, these headers are important to have set somewhere because they establish what requests are allowed versus which ones will reject. Like if you have a same origin request, then it doesn't matter what the request is. What's the same origin request? If a website from the same host meaning like www.whatever.com. So if your API is www.whatever.com and the website making a request to your API is www.whatever.com, um, then you're, you can do whatever you want. But let's say your API is www.whatever.com, but your website is www.thatthing.com. Well, then that's called a cross origin request. You have two different hosts. You have one host making a request for resources from another host. The browser has a built-in feature to, to watch out for that called cores, cross-origin resource sharing. And what that does is that if it sees a cross-origin request, the thing that you're requesting from, okay, so like, again, this.com requests from, makes a request to whatever.com. Whatever.com has to send a response with certain headers that clarifies who's allowed to receive a response from that endpoint. It just this way, like two different websites can't abuse each other's like APIs or backends. Um, basically, you can say, hey, only these things can make a request to my server. And there's generally four headers that handle that. Okay, to keep it real simple, essentially, and we just find like they're down here somewhere, they have them all listed right here. Essentially, it's these are the different headers access, control, allow, origin. And then you can actually have a list of different URLs that are allowed to make requests. Or you could just have an asterisk, which means all URLs, which is essentially the default for the thing that we just used. Allow methods, like can they make post requests, get requests, put requests, what's allowed? Access allow headers, which headers are allowed? And max age, like how long can the request last? Like if, you know, when does it time out? So these four headers, particularly these first two or three are pretty important. Uh, so that way you don't get your request rejected from if you have if you're creating a website across multiple like a separate front end and back end. But when I do this, when I just do cores by itself like this, that's just giving a blanket anything's allowed. Okay, anyone can make a request to my back end. I can tighten up the security. If 
you ever want to, you just go to npmjs.com, just look up the Coors library, and then you can read the documentation on how to like modify what's allowed, what isn't allowed, all that's in here in the documentation. Okay, but that's all the Coors middleware is. It's just basically going to prevent any sort of future, um, make sure that the, the right headers are there on our responses, so that way cross-origin requests that we want to happen can happen. So Coors headers. Now we also wanted um, app.use. Actually, I don't want that in that order. It does matter, kind of doesn't super matter what order you do these in, but they do happen in the order that you post them. Okay, so like that's something to keep in mind. If you want some middleware to happen first, it should go first. Okay, everything in Express happens in the order that it is presented in your code. So it's always something you want to keep in mind, make sure you don't have something that sort of conflicts with something that co comes up later on. So app.use, we want to express that static. Remember we mentioned that earlier, that's the thing that's gonna make the public folder the, the place to be. Um, also app.use, again, this, is, uh, this allows us to serve static files from the public folder app.use express.json. This is middleware built into Express. In this middleware, what it's for is that if a body comes in with JSON, so let's see if I can find an example, uh, JSON HTTP request. Okay, images. Let me see an example request. I just want to see in like the raw, I think this might be what we're looking for. Yeah, this looks like a raw. Okay, so say, so again, HTTP requests, they come in this format. So again, it's like post, the URL, the format. So it looks for this particular header, content type. And the content type will say, this is the way the body is written. So in this case, it says J application JSON. There's like a standard list of them. Um, so application JSON means, hey, look, this body right here, because again, remember we have the sort of like this introductory part of your your HTTP request that shows you the the method and URL. Then you have all your other headers that go line by line, key and value, and then there's like a line break, and then there's your body. Problem is the body could be XML, it could be URL encoded data, it could be JSON, it could be HTML, like what is it? So there's different content type headers that help different like browsers and servers communicate to each other. The thing in the body, it's this. So this express.json middleware looks for this header. If it sees this header saying application JSON, it's gonna then parse the body as JSON data and give you back a JavaScript object in rec.body. So that's what express.json does. Okay, app.use, uh, if we do express.url encoded, and then we have to do an object that's extended and that's gonna equal true. That's just the thing you gotta put in there. But if you do this, this parses application JSON content type headers uh, and then turns it into rec.body. So that's where rec.body comes from. For URL encoded bodies, okay, it's done through um, the header is parses. Uh, I always forget what the header for URL encoded. Uh, URL encoded data. URL encoded header. Okay. Yep, that's it. Application slash x www.foyu encoded. So if it sees that as the content type header, then, and then notice like this is what URL encoded data looks like. Again, it's like that, it looks like a query string. So it's like key value and key value and key value. So the data is gonna show up in the body that way, okay? So URL encoded data looks like this while JSON data looked like in that format we saw a second ago, which is more like a JavaScript object. But again, if the server doesn't know which way to do it, it's just not gonna know how to parse it. So that's why it's important to have that header there. That's generally the header that all frameworks and all languages kind of, it's a standard that's set that allows them all to know like, okay, I should expect this. Okay, so this parses application x 
www.url is it is there another hyphen there you are form url encoded because it's usually from a form uh form url encoded because by default when you submit a form in html like if you're not doing fancier javascript stuff and you're just using the form the way they were originally created to be used in job in, in uh, html the way they submit the data is in this format well nowadays typically we're going to just do everything in json but sometimes you you want to use the old school way of using forms and that's the way you would parse that data now there's other ways to write request bodies like theoretically you could pass yaml you could pass xml now those they don't have like body parsers that are built into express like these are the two default body what they're called body parsers they parse the body um but you can find like uh different ones if you really if for some reason you wanted to like send data as yaml i'm sure there's something there like let's take a look npmjs.com so let's see here is there a such thing as a yaml body parser nope doesn't look like it but there are other body parsing libraries body parser express okay and see like there's like you can find like xml body parsers for sure and it's just different different choices for all sorts of different things but i would say i've never needed an xml body parser xml is more of a pattern of the past um, generally if you're working with node you're gonna be working with json and occasionally url encoded data if you're doing templating and even then it's kind of optional. Okay, so our, see, we see have a, we have a lot of middleware here. Okay, I'm trying to think if there's any other really key middleware I want to add here so far. No. But now, see, I've exported this function, and now I can import this function to server.js. So, and the benefit of this is I'm going to be able to reduce the amount of code that I write. So now I can just import, we'll just call the function middleware, middleware from... And uh, the f now again now I'm not giving it a library that I've installed. I'm doing dot slash um, middleware. I'm referring to the folder mid, and I'm actually referring to the file. So notice I have to use a file path when I'm referring to a specific file within my project, not a library in the node modules folder. So when it has no dot slash or dot dot slash or some sort of file path, it's going to look inside the node modules folder. When it does have a file path, then it looks where the file is relative to where this file is. So again, that file path is relative to, in this case, since I'm writing in server.js, it's relative to where server.js is. So where is this file? In the same folder, that's what dot slash means, in the same folder, there's a folder called middleware, and in there there's a full file called mid, and that's what this says. Okay, right there. So now I have this function, and I can get rid of all this middleware now. I can just say middleware web server and essentially what's going to happen is that i pass the web server into the function so web server gets passed in as app and then it does all the app dot uses and then that's it now all that middleware is registered with my with my app and now server.js has a lot less code in it beautiful okay now how about my routes maybe i don't want to write all my routes here so that's where i'm going to use controllers so I'll create a new file in controllers. We'll call it our, our, our main router. Okay, so we'll call it um, main dot, or call it main router .js. And basically what we do is we're gonna create routers which are bundles of routes. So I'm gonna say const, what we do is first we have to bring in um, express. So we have to import express from express. Because again, and again, if you're wondering why I'm using module syntax, again, I could, I turned it on by adding this key. If I took that off, then I have to switch everything to using require. Um, so my main router import express from express. And um, what I can then do is in, I can create what's called a router and that do that by running this express dot router function. And that's gonna create a router object that gets stored in here. And a router just means a lot of routes. So I can write routes with this router. So I can, what I can do is I can just take all the routes that I have in server.js 
So I'll just take all these rats over here. Control X. Okay. And I will just put them in here. But instead of using web server to create the route, I'm going to use a router. So this becomes like router.get. Because I'm not registering it with that main web server variable, that main app object. I'm registering them with router, which is just a small mini subclump of routes. So think of it as like a little mini app that I can put under app. Okay, so then I just change these all to router. So that all becomes router. Let me just think of this, see if I'm referring to. Now I am using, I've, I'm gonna just take change that out. So we're not using a, a n variable here. But I don't think I'm referring to anything else that I would need to import. So this is fine. So then I would export default the router. And then now I can, an export default just means I'm exporting this value, the name doesn't matter. So if I go to server.js and I wanna import it, Okay, I can now, and actually I don't need Morgan here anymore. I'm not using it. So see, I'm, I'm, I'm reducing the total amount of lines I've written now, which is pretty cool. Again, why it's kind of nice to have like the multiple files, just makes it more organized. Like if I need to change my middleware, I can just do it in this file. I can find the router for the routes that I'm working on. Um, we'll get to the models in a moment. Okay, and let's see here. Let me import the router. So I'm gonna say import main router we can call it whatever we want from dot slash controllers slash main router and even though like the file was the, the variable was called the router that I exported since it was a default export I can then bring it in as whatever I want to call it so I can call it main router and instead of having to write routes down here I can just register routes by saying web server dot use in the same way you register middleware you register a router so I would just say main router Okay, and this will be handled for, and then what I can do is I can say it's only used for certain requests. So I'm gonna say, hey, this will be used for any request that starts with slash. Okay, so this will be our, our main router with all our default routes. Pretty cool. Okay, and again, now this server.js is looking pretty cleaned up. Okay. Okay, so our file's pretty cleaned up now. Okay, like they're really, isn't much more to clean out of here. So I can now take a look and our, our server should be working just as of before, but again, just like our main server files just more cleaned up. And now we have these router files, you know, we can clean these up a little bit. You know, I always like to like make sections so that we can see what's what. So, you know, import dependencies. So I'm just copy this. So here we're importing dependencies. Then we're going to register some routes. And we export the router. And this middleware, that's pretty self explanatory. So, overall, this looks pretty clean. And again, it's just nice to be able to parse out and take some of the code that's in our server.js and just move it somewhere else so it's a little bit more organized. So, that's Nice. And then again, if I run the server, npm run dev. Oh, it doesn't like something, so let's examine. Okay, now when reading the JavaScript area, you generally want to start, like, not at the bottom. At the bottom, this isn't going to be too helpful. It's this piece right here. There's always the errors going to be, like, right here in this section towards the top of the error. Okay, that's going to tell you what it's looking for. So it's telling me you cannot find modules. So that means I probably imported something wrong. So let's just see where... Where it's telling me that. Imported from home, Alex at home, scratch videos. So in server.js, I imported mid wrong. It doesn't like how I imported it. Now let's see here. Import. Hmm. Let's see here. Server.js is in the same folder as the middleware folder. I think it should. Oh, now it's development teaching scratch video singles, Express 60, middleware mid, that's right. No, oh, that's right. I spelled a mid common like middle. Oh, I know why. Because I'm using ES module syntax, you now have to write the full file names. 
So actually, I need to go. There's gonna be a whole bunch of errors here right now. I gotta make sure I add the .js in front of everything because in ES module syntax, at least in Node, it's gonna want that. So let me go back over here. Then I need to import anything there. New. Okay, I think everything's good then. Nope, some not. Express dot state. Oops, that's in my middleware function. I misspelled static. So again, oftentimes like you get an error, just take a moment and read the error. The error usually, errors are usually pretty self-explanatory. Like express that state is not a function. Well, I didn't mean to write state, but I really meant a static. So that just tells me I've made a typo. Okay, like, like look at the error and meditate on a second. Oftentimes, like, it tells you and it, it'll point to you at the line where it is and you have to ask yourself, it's like, is that what I meant to type? Like, is that is that what it should look like? Okay, and you'll, you'll see the error. So that's where you're gonna do a lot of learning is in reading the error. So always just take a moment, read the error, take it in, think about it, swish it around in your mouth, meditate on it, you know, enjoy it. Okay, um, cool. But now it's working. So let's see here, local host. See here, we try we, we still working. If I go to render goal, still working. Okay, so our routes are still working. When I refresh, I think get an error. Great, okay. So now let's start making like now let's start talking about this models folder. Now this models folder is usually where your data stuff is, typically like connecting to a database. So, and generally you're gonna use some sort of abstraction to connect to your database called a object manager. So if you're talking about a document database like Mongo, you're gonna use an object document manager or mapper. And uh, really in, in Node, there's just one particular one that everyone uses, that's gonna be mongoose, npmjs.com. So that's mongoose. Okay, like if I type in Mongo ODM, I don't think there is other ones. Let's find out. Straightforward. Okay, so there are some other ones that exist. I've never used them. Uh, Mongoose is kind of like the one that generally, generally everyone uses, but looks like they, yeah, there are some other Mon Mongo. Mongo is a database. So like Mongo is like the database software that runs a separate database server that can save, like save data. The ODM, which Mongoose is a ODM they are the things that allows my application to talk to that server. Okay, like the glue between my app and the database server. Okay, so yeah, it looks like there's plenty of ODMs. So like Mongoose is not the only one in town. Now when it comes to SQL databases like Postgres, MySQL, um, Oracle DB, Cockroach DB, all these other databases, what you usually will use is what's called an ORM, an object relational map. So if I take a look up ORM, there's a bunch of them. Okay, so uh, SQLize is a popular one. Um, I think we'll see if I see any other ones that really kind of stand out to me. Like usually the two I think about is gonna be SQLize and um, Objection are the two that I've used in the past. Um, but you can, you don't, that's a cool thing about Express. You don't have to use any particular one. You use the one that you like the best. Or if you just want to try a new one today because you feel like learning something new, which I do all the time, you just pick one out and try to use it in Express. Express doesn't really care where your information comes from. You get it where you want to get it from. Okay? <clears throat> but today we're not going to connect to a database. Maybe in video three, we'll see if there's a video three. Um, what we're going to do is we're just going to use, uh, I'm just going to create like a JSON file. So I'm going to call this data.json. Um, and I mean, just think of what's, a, and then basically every data has a shape that's referred to as a schema of the data. It's like, um, basically it's part of my data model, which is why it's called models. So let's pretend that we have an array of picks. Okay, so this is our data about picks. So I have an JSON, JSON data looks like a JavaScript type data structures. So I'm starting with an array, and then in the array there's a bunch of objects, each one representing one pig. Every pig, as a name, since I'm writing it in JSON, I have to use quotation marks around the keys, and um, and then again the values are strings or numbers. So in this case, the name we'll call it Porky, and name uh, age we'll say six seven. Okay, so there's one thing except I got to put quotation marks around this key. Okay, because again, this is JSON, not JavaScript, it's a JSON file. So again, like package.json is JSON, so you see all the keys have quotation marks around them. So JSON, then just like a normal array, I would put comma, 
You just can't have a trailing comma, so it's going to complain if I put more objects. The trailing comma is like a comma with nothing after it, so I have to get rid of that last comma. There we go. And that's properly formed JSON. Let's rename these big. Let's call this one Petunia. We'll call this one Wilbur. We will call this one uh, Hampton. I think of any other famous pigs. Oh, and the eight, of course. Okay, and I'll, I won't care about the ages. But the idea is like, here's our data set, okay? Typically, this would be a data a data schema. So the schema would be age is a, name is a string and age is, age is a number. That's the schema, like the, how each object, each data, piece of each data point is made up of two properties. Name, which is always a string, age, which is a number. That's the schema, the description of the shape of the data. So usually in a database, I would have a schema that describes the shape of the data, and I would save the data in like tables or collections. In this case, it's just an array of objects. But we can kind of use it as a sort of a mock database of sorts. So there's our data. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new router where we can create routes to deal with this data. Okay, so first we're going to do it with templating, and then we'll do it as an API. Okay? So, cool. So, uh, and again, if I'm going to create routes, that's going to be inside the controllers folder. So I'm going to create a new file, and we'll call this pigs.js, because it's my pigs controller. Okay, and then I'm just going to copy the, the router setup from here, because it has all my settings. So I'll just use that as kind of my starting point. Clear out the routes, I don't need those. But everything else is pretty much the same. And I'm going to import my data. So I can, I think here we're going to run into a, a little bit of an issue um, because the way Node handles JSON data when you're doing modules. You'll see when I get, when I get the error. Uh, import, um, import, we'll call it pigs from, we'll just call it pigs, lowercase, from up a folder, because I have to go up a folder because I'm in the controllers folder. So now I'm back in the main folder. I want to go back down to the models folder. It's two dots means up a folder. So from where I'm at, up a folder, then back down to models, and then to grab data.json. Okay, okay, so far I didn't give me any issues. That's good. Okay, so maybe it's one of the, the newer versions of Node, since I generally update, update frequently, doesn't have that issue anymore. Before you have to pass like an experimental flag when you're using modules to use JSON, it's kind of annoying. Okay. So models data.json. Perfect, lovely. Okay. So now I can write routes. So usually what's gonna happen is that you wanna do what's called full CRUD. Okay, full CRUD. Now what does CRUD mean? CRUD is a certain like level of functionality. So if I, if I, if I search CRUD, Okay, and I take a look at images about CRUD. It just means to create, read, update, delete. So that's the functionality I want to create. I want to be able to like read, meaning I can see the list of pigs. I can create new pigs. I can update the list of pigs. I can delete pigs. That's what I'd like to do. Okay. Now we can do it in one of two ways. We can actually just build the whole site all together and kind of make it all functional through templates. Or we can build an API and then build a front end that provides the visual piece. We'll kind of do at least the back end piece of both. Okay, so let's see here. And now to do that, what you're gonna want is you want what's called RESTful routes. Okay, so these are the actual routes we would make for every model. So pigs is our model. Anytime you have like a different type of data, so if I had like a, an app that had you know, cats, dogs, pigs, whatnot, I would create, each one would be an individual model and each one would get their own individual sets of routes in this format. So in this case, it'd be like slash pigs, you know, instead of slash photos, because pigs is the model. But essentially, I'm gonna create all these routes. So I'm gonna leave this here. So we'll just go one by one. First, we're gonna create our get route, uh, what's called our uh, index route, okay? And the index route, is meant to be the route that gives you back all the things. So I should be able to get back all the pigs. Okay? So what I'm going to do is go back to my VS Code. 
I'm going to be, again, doing this with templates first, and then we'll do the API version, or we'll do both as we go along. Okay? So I'm going to create a folder in my views folder called, well, it should be a folder, not a file, a new folder called pigs for all my pig templates. Okay? And I'm going to create a new file, index.ejs file. That's what we'll do that when we get there. So now going back to my pigs controller where I'm going to define the routes, uh, first I'm going to define the template version. Okay, so this will be, um, and again, all these routes, always assume that they start with, assume they start with slash pigs. So basically, what I'm, why, am I, why does it start with slash pigs? Is because I'm going to import this particular router. So this router, I'm going to import here as the pigs router in server.js. Import pigs router from dot slash controllers slash a main uh, pigs.js. You guys need the to file extensions. Okay, and I think I need another file extension somewhere else. What does that like? Yep, there, there's the, there's the error I was talking about for the file extension. Yes, uh, da, 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 JSON. Okay. Uh -huh. And then we have the pass uh, function. We have the pass that could basically get a flag uh, using JSON files with ES modules. <coughs> There's a trick to this in a while. And we fire some file JSON. There we go, experimental. So what we need to do is run this experimental flag. Okay? So this is where scripts become really nice. Because this would be really annoying for me to have to write every time I like node server.js in the flag. What I can do is I can just add it to my scripts. So I'll just go cool. Actually I think put it for the server.js like this and like this okay and let me just do this and there we go and see now see it, it, it can recognize the flag <coughs> so good I can now use that JSON file so again, and I don't have to type all of this out because I can just type in npm run dev or npm run start, and that's a video script. So you have to kind of add more flags and more girth to your commands. You don't have to type more. You just add it to the script, and the script handles the extra bloat, uh, which is nice. Okay, so that takes care of that. So let's go back to our pigs controller file. Okay, and again, just write a normal route. So, you, but again, we're using router this time. So it'll be router dot get. And again, a b t. The route for uh, the index route should always be um, just like the main thing. Oh yeah, I forgot what I was in the middle of doing over here. Sorry, a little over the place there. But again, we imported the pigs router, and I'm going to connect the pigs router so we have access to those routes. I'm going to put it before the main router because I only want these routes to be hit if they don't fall into any other category. So web server dot use for any URL that starts with slash pigs, I want them to use the pigs router. So if the URL starts with slash pigs, it's going to send it to the pigs router. That's why I don't have to write slash pigs again, because a slash pigs is already assumed, because I already kind of addressed that in server.js when I registered the middleware. So that's done. So in this case, this is really going to be for a get request get request to slash pigs that's really what this is going to be okay now let's do our normal rec res deal and what we're going to do is we're just going to do res dot render and again it's going to be slash pigs or pigs slash index.ejs. Why is that? Because again, it always assumes the views folder. 
So it's always going to get to like use slash. I just have to kind of detail the rest of the path from there. So in that case, it's pigs slash index.ejs. So that's the file I wanted to render, and I wanted to send the pigs data. Okay, so it has the pigs data. And I don't have to do pigs colon pigs because JavaScript, if the key and value are going to be the same text, I can, it, JavaScript will let me do this. Be like, don't write pigs colon pigs, just write pigs. You're good. It knows to take the, the, the name of the variable as the key and then the value of the variable as the value. It just, JavaScript's here to help us out. So essentially all this is saying is like, hey, if there's a get request to slash pigs, uh, then uh, render the pigs slash index JS file and uh, you know submit this data. So now we can go to that index that EJS file and uh, I'm gonna say, hey, our pigs, each one, create the like pigs, this is like, our pigs. Yay. And you know what? We may want to use like things like CSS and whatnot, but we don't wanna have to be writing like the whole HTML boilerplate all the time. So what you can do is to make our life easier what we can do is we can use what's called an EJS partial. So what we do is we'll just create a folder in our views folder called new file. We'll call it same new file new folder called partials. These are basically little snippets of EJS that we can inject in other files. We'll call it partials, and we'll just create a new file. Um, new file called header.ejs or head.ejs, but this can be our head tag. Okay, so that we can like inject CSS files, whatever. Um, let's say we want to use like milligram. Like it's a, it's a CSS library I love to use because it's really easy, kind of a lot of the really useful defaults. So if I look up like milligram CSS, I select that, I scroll down to the bottom, get the, here we go, this is what I want, the link tags. So I just copy those over. And then I can put those here. And now I have this head tag that I can just inject on whatever page I need. So what I need to do is just remember like EJS partials, always forget the exact syntax on this one. Partials, mm, here we go. I just need this e, these syntax real quick. Uh, e partials. Ah, here we go. This is this is it. Okay. So essentially, the way this would work is that if I want that head tag to be above, I just put this there, and see. So notice it's a minus instead of an equal sign, or instead of nothing. So it's like the, again, the big difference is you have to remember is like these look like little squids, and it's an equal sign when you want to inject text, and it's like a minus sign when you're including just like raw text. So in this case, what this include function does is that it's gonna go grab the text from this file, which we're gonna say it's partial slash um, head, because that's the name of the file, head, partial slash head, and that's gonna inject that there. So now we're gonna have this, any code that we have here, this head tag with any CSS style sheets and other libraries we'll bring in, will just be quickly inset inserted there. So this is one less thing to worry about. I don't have to type that out over and over and over again for every page. That's where this is where that templating becomes pretty nice. Okay, so our pigs slash h1, and then I will use ejs to iterate over the pig. So we'll do a ul. Okay, and then we're going to use ejs to loop over the pigs data. So we're going to say for every pig of pigs. Okay, and which we have to write we have to write in JavaScript syntax or for pig of pigs, opening curly bracket, and again we're going to want to then close the EJS bracket, and then we want to put closing curly bracket down here, and now we can write what we want to happen in that loop. What do we want? We want an li, and in each li there will be an h1, actually not an h1, I'll say h2, that's going to have 
and I'm injecting text now, so I'm going to use equal sign. I'm going to inject the pig dot name. And how do I know that there's a pig dot name property? Well, this is why it's important for you to know your data. I know this is what my data looks like, so I know each of these pigs have a name and an age property. So when I loop over the pigs, because pigs is this array, I know that when I say pig of pigs, pig equals one of these individual pigs as it loops over the array when you're using a for of loop. And if you're not familiar with what a for of loop and how it works, do watch like my iterating masterclass video. Um, I go, go over it much more in detail there. Okay, so back to the EJS file, uh, index.ejs here, and then we'll do an H3. And here we'll have dig.age, and again I need the equal sign, so that way I'm injecting the thing there. And there we go. And that's that. So now technically I should be able to go to localhost slash pigs. Oh, looks like there's some issue with my, not find the include file partial slash head. So I may, I may need to do a relative value. I think I, that's exactly what I need to do. So what I need to do here is I need to do like dot dot slash partials. Like that, I think that's what I need to do. Yes, there we go. And you see like, that looks nicer. You see the fonts change because we're bringing in that milligram CSS library because that include injected that head tag at the top of the HTML file. Okay, and again, what does the browser receive? Like if we look inside our dev tools, and I go to sources, okay, like our code, we never got, this is making fun of the actual HTML file, pigs, Okay, so like this is what we end up getting. Uh, hey, that's not it. That's a CSS file. That's a grammar check.js. There we go, there's the HTML file. So you notice, like, look, look, it's the HTML. So EJS doesn't send us EJS code because the browser doesn't know how to read the EJS code. The server uses EJS to render the HTML file. And see, it's now all in one file. There's our head tag. There's the h with our pigs, and then again, we looped over to generate the HTML for each pig. So what the browser receives is the finished HTML file. That's what, how server-side rendering works. The server assembles the HTML file. The browser only sees the ending HTML file. They know, have no idea what an EJS file is, nor does the browser care. The server cares. Okay? So that's just kind of drive that home. Okay. So that's the way it would look like for the, how the index page would look like for using templating. Again, you probably want to spend some more time making it look cleaner, do some more styling. But again, we're trying to cover as much stuff as we can. Now, how would that same route look like as an API? So let's see here. Back to our pigs controller. So now we'll do the API version of the same route. The API version. So this would be a get request to slash API, or well, slash pigs, slash API. So usually you, you put APIs behind like some sort of API namespace to separate them from non-API routes. Okay, so we'll just say router.get slash API, and then we'll write, write the function, rec res, and then again, instead of doing res.render, I do res.json, and I just send the data. Case. You know what I don't like about that? Oh, really? Yes. Looks good to me. Rec res. Oh, I've done this before. Forgot the comma here. Okay, because again, this is, this is the first argument to the get function. This is the second argument to the get function. Okay, so now I should be able to go to pig slash API and now I get the data as JSON. So I'm getting the pig data as JSON instead. Now my re like I can create like a React website that pulls that data via an API and renders it and does all that stuff. Okay? So you can see like doing the templating and doing the JSON isn't 
too tricky, you know, side by side. How do we do it on time? Okay, we got 10 more minutes. So I think we can get the show. Okay, so again, I'm just going to label these routes real quick. So that was the index route. Again, what this does, it gets us all the data. Gets us all the data. So it gets us all the data on base. Now, we're going to create the show route. Gets us the data on one item. So instead of giving us every all the data about all the pigs, the show route is supposed to just give us the details on one pig. And the way that usually works is you pass some sort of identifier in the URL as a URL parent. So again, we'll do we'll do both versions. So I'll just copy these over. So save us some time there. Okay. The only difference is that instead of get request to slash pigs, it's going to be the slash pigs colon index because they're in an array. I usually would use ID. I will use ID anyways. And then here we'll say slash API slash ID. So again, the colon means param. So now in this case, it would be to get request to slash pigs colon ID. Okay. Um, cool. And Jen, I'm going to, you'll see later on, I'm going to inject routes above the show route because the show route can easily end up screwing up some of the other routes because it's just a variable. So any, it can, anything can match with it, and you don't necessarily want some of the other routes we're going to do to match with it. Okay, so generally you want to put your show route at the bottom of your routes. Um, but yeah, so basically we're going to have a show.ejs for this one, so we'll get to that. And then we're going to want to send over just the right pigs, so not all the pigs. So what we're going to do is we're going to fish out the right pigs. So we're going to say const pig equals pigs, and then it's an array, so we want the index, which is going to be rec.params.id. Okay? Although, here's the thing you have to keep in mind. Whenever you get params, they generally come in as a string. So so basically, I'm passing a string here. So just to make sure that I'm like passing the number ID, I'm going to use parse int. Parse int, what it does, it takes input and tries to turn it into, make sure it turns it into a number. So that way, if I get the string of one, it turns it into the number one. OK? So that's what that is, OK? So turn string param into a number use as index for desired pig. In that case then we pass the pig to the template and now that pig has that template has that pig. Okay? And then we would do the same thing over here. Okay, so this would be slash API slash colon ID. And I would do the same thing again. Cons, I'll just copy it. Except this time you would send the pig as JSON. So all we have left to do is to create the index, the EJS file. So in my pigs folder, create a new file. We'll call it show.ejs. Okay, that's for the show route. Okay, and uh, again, I'm going to include the partial. So I'm going to just copy that partial line over there. That way that head tag is all taken care of. And the cool thing is, is that if, now if I change that head file, it's going to change it for both templates because it's injecting it from the same place. So this all makes it much easier to update all my pages, update their styling, because it's all coming from one place. Uh, it's not like the old days where you, like, if you go back to like, the early days of web development, you had to create like, a separate HTML file. Each of them had their own head tag. So if you had to like change which style sheet you're pulling in or add like something like Bootstrap, you'd have to go update the head tag in each page, which would be really tedious. But with server-side rendering, you can just not do that. Um, and then with things like React and Angular, you only have one page, so not much of an issue. Okay, so again, we're gonna have that single pig, so we don't really need to do like a loop or anything. We're just gonna say, hey, H1, inject the pig's name, so percentage equals pig.name. And again, I know the variable is called pig, because if I go to my route, see I passed it as a variable called pig. Okay, that's 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 how I know. That's how I know what I can use in the EJS file. And I can do h2 and do percentage equals 
cake.page. And that's all fine and good. Okay, so that's enough that this should be working now. So now if I go to pig slash zero, I will get the first pig, Porky. So I get Porky seven, because it's spinning the pig with this index in the array. If I get the one, I'll get Petunia, if, you know, so forth. Now if I do slash API slash zero, I get Porky as JSON. If I do, you know, three, I get uh, Hampton as JSON. It'll get me the, the pig with the ID that I specified in the URL because I'm using the URL param to dynamically grab the pig from the array. And again, so now it feels like I have lots of pages and lots of endpoints to my API when really it's just one, okay? URL params can really allow you to, to squeeze some juice out of a little bit of code, okay? If you, if you plan it like thoughtfully. Okay, so that's that. I think we're right now about to hit the close enough to hit the hour. So what we're going to do is we'll continue with the remaining endpoints going forward. But what I'm going to do is uh, let's do, let's save this all to GitHub. So git add dot git commit dash m. Um, uh, video tool. And then we'll do, we'll push git push origin video two is the brand. So now if you go see the URL on GitHub, okay, refresh, you can see the code from the first video on main, and you can see the code from the second video on video two, and then tomorrow I'll probably make a video three so we can finish out these code routes, and then maybe a video four we'll add the database. We'll just kind of like flesh it all out. Um, but yeah, we'll leave it at that for now. I'll see you guys all later.